ओके वंस अगेन वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड वेलकम बैक टू अवर सेशन ऑन हीट ट्रांसफर इन फैक्ट दिस लेक्चर वॉज लाइक अनप्लान जस्ट ऑन द राइट ऑन द स्पॉट आई जस्ट डिसाइडेड इफ वी कैन जस्ट स्कीप इन वन ऑफ द लेक्चर सो ओके एनीवेज आई थिंक सम ऑफ द पीपल हैव जॉइंट सो without wasting much time uh, let's get back on to the business okay so yesterday was an auspicious uh, day of dasra i, uh, I think uh, i hope all of you have enjoyed it well let me present my screen just uh, give me some confirmation so in the last lecture we have started a discussion on a new sub topic Uh, called uh, the heat transfer from extended surfaces uh, very famously known as fins just uh, let me share my screen so give me confirmation are you able to see the change in the screen any one of you please give give your yes sir reply okay you are able to see the slide show you can read something like fin basics and uh, uh, many list many uh, things listed out i hope it is clearly visible to you as well as my voice is reaching in loud and clear manner to you if you have any difficulty in that sense in that regard you can uh, you can notify about me okay so uh, we we had discussed uh, this uh, uh, these things in the last lecture that uh, in many applications we have to increase the rate of heat transfer uh, and and uh, and this have uh, this we have to do uh, in many cases when there is a major part of uh, heat transfer by convection okay so and equation of convection as we know it is given by h a into delta t h being the heat transfer coefficient a that is surface area and uh, delta t that is temperature difference okay so out of these three parameters uh, on which the heat transfer rate is directly dependent uh, h is not in our control t delta t is also not in our control so what we can do is only increase the surface area surface area available for the heat transfer but in doing that also we cannot uh, blindly increase the area uh, okay because uh, uh, whenever any system any mechanical system let us say an ic engine is designed uh, okay uh, cooling is just one aspect we have to uh, cool cool the engine to so that uh, its temperature will be maintained within safe limit or safe uh, working uh, and allow uh, allowable limit but uh heat transfer is not the major role uh, uh, heat transfer uh, rate or cooling of ic engine is not the major function of ic engine ic engine ic engine will be designed uh, on the uh, on the primary requirement of uh, power generation okay so how much power it can deliver the, on that basis the dimensions of ic engine are fixed okay so uh, the heat heat transfer that is the cooling requirement of course there is a requirement of a cooling of engine but that becomes a secondary part okay only because we uh, we want to have more and more uh, heat transfer or more amount of cooling we cannot increase the overall dimensions of the engine we cannot uh, blindly uh, increase the diameter of uh, diameter of cylinder or uh, or increase the stroke length on and so on and so forth okay so that becomes a secondary uh, so uh, without changing much uh, without changing much of the dimensions or without uh, making major mo modifications to the basic uh, design of engine what we can do is we can increase the surface area that is available to heat transfer by providing some attachments by providing some additional attachments and uh, these can be provided by uh, extended surfaces just we have to uh, uh, attach some extended surfaces on the basic area or base area and that becomes that is known as a fins from which uh, we can get uh, more surface area for heat transfer as available 
and thereby we can achieve more amount of cooling okay or required amount of cooling so this is only in our hand in the given situation so such uh, such extended surfaces are known as fins and uh, these are uh, these have been used in many applications uh, this is the basic idea of fin when there is no any fin there is some heat transfer rate from the base area and to increase this, this rate of heat transfer in a given situation or for the given conditions we can attach sir uh, we can attach certain fins uh, fins may be having uh, different shapes and different forms and different geometries uh, as we increase the fins uh, surface area is going to increase and due to increase in surface area uh, the basic rate of heat transfer is going to increase because delta t is fixed and heat transfer coefficient is fixed only surface area we can increase okay so this is this becomes a fin surface and these uh, uh, attachments are known as uh, or these extended surfaces are known as fins okay so basically fins the purpose of providing fins is to enhance the heat transfer rate is to enhance the heat transfer rate okay so many such applications you can easily find uh, ic engine being one of the most common and uh, famous uh, application where we want to have cylinder cooling uh, so that the temperature of the cylinder head and cylinder block will be maintained below certain uh, safe limit so allowable limit okay uh, same way uh, there is uh, there are uh, reciprocating air compressors which also have the similar mechanism like ic engine that is reciprocating twister and cylinder arrangement is there and due to uh, uh, due to continuous operation and friction lot of heat generation takes place inside the cylinder and its temperature has to be maintained uh, below certain limit and for that matter whatever is the heat generation occurring in that area has to be removed out okay has to be uh, has, has to be uh, transferred to the surrounding transport to the surrounding field by convection okay same is the case with uh, many electrical and ele uh, electronic components uh, many uh, at many places you might have seen such structures of uh, power transformers uh, which are heavy duty electrical power transformers we have to, uh, which which uh, which are working continuously uh, transferring the power and uh, uh, either they may be stepping up and or stepping down the voltage levels and due to current uh, conduction uh, continuous current conduction through the coils a lot of heat generation takes place and to maintain their temperature below certain limit uh, heat removal uh, is a requirement and to increase this heat transfer rate uh, uh, such fins are provided or fin fin system or fin array are provided over the uh, around the body of the main body of the transformer and thereby we can get the increased rate of heat transfer and increased amount of cooling same is the case with any, any electrical motor you get to see such casing of electrical motor and you can easily figure out that this uh, these extended surfaces are nothing but fins which which increase the heat transfer rate from the motor body or motor casing to the surrounding so thereby uh, motor can be cooled down uh, cooled down quickly and its temperature will be maintained below certain limit okay same is the case for uh, uh, radiators car radiators which are used for engine cooling purpose uh, the same goes with uh, cooling and heating coils of refrigeration and air conditioning uh, air conditioning equipment okay electronic cooling components they are There was little power of uh, problem and the connected, but uh, I have come back again. I will uh, put my video off so that I can save my, uh, some of the battery energy. Okay. Uh, Once again, give me uh, confirmation from your side. Are you able to see the uh, screen? 
because there was a internet disconnection you can say yes or no in your message box or you can directly even unmute and directly talk yes any one of you i will repeat the screen sharing so that uh, it will take some effect now see are you able to see the change of screen yes sir okay okay i got some response okay thank you so electronic components uh, you have seen this uh, uh, in many devices particularly in computers uh, laptops if you take out the back cover of a, your laptop or any, any computer you will you are going to get uh, you are going to see such uh, structures okay all these are typically known as heat sinks these are provided for cooling of the electronic equipment because uh so much of power consumption happen is happening uh, over a over a very small area and it becomes a, a heat concentration effect and because of this local temperature goes uh, to very high level and if uh, the uh, heat removal is not sufficient what will happen burn uh, the electronic components will uh, eventually burn out and that will lead to uh, some detrimental loss okay so the complete damage or sufficient damage may happen to the uh, very valuable parts of a computer or any digital device okay to avoid that uh, different heat sinks have been designed over the time so with this uh, we have we had sufficiently discussed uh, all sorts of uh, applications for the fins in uh, in practice from at industrial level as well as in commercial uh, commercial world okay uh, same is the case with uh, various heat exchangers where uh, uh, tubes are provided with the extended surfaces such as fins okay typical one such example is uh, the condenser of uh, domestic refrigerator okay in domestic refrigerator you might have seen or might uh, are very familiar with uh, if you take just look at uh, the back side of the uh, uh, any domestic refrigerator you are going to see this kind of uh, arrangement okay so this is a condenser uh, this is a coil type condenser a single coil is running through and uh, a wires are attached to it okay so different number of wires with certain spacing are attached and these are nothing but fins or extended surfaces so that the uh, uh, the heat removal from the condenser will uh, happen at sufficient rate or at at required rate okay so many such uh, examples you will find from your day to day life or uh, from your uh, from your experience okay then uh, we covered the basic types of fins based on the geometry these will be divided into different categories such as straight fins with uh, constant uh, with uh, uniform cross section uh tapering fins with variable cross section circular or annular fins uh, conical fins or pin fins okay these are all having a uh, plate like st structure and uh, whereas a uh, fins in the form of a long rod or long wire are uh, typically known as pin fins and our um, our study is uh, is limited to the study of pin fins okay because as the geometry uh, go on uh, uh, geometries go on uh, more and more uh, uh, in a complicated shape and forms uh, the analysis becomes much more difficult okay then mathematical analysis also becomes much lengthier and uh, very very difficult okay so uh, uh, at uh, pre preliminary level at uh, at undergraduate level we can take on the study of uh, pin fins for which mathematical uh, derivations and analysis are available and uh, their and uh, their equations we can easily handle 
okay again for pin fin uh, we have variety of boundary conditions and uh, as we change the boundary conditions so its analysis is going to change okay so pin fin is typically shown as shown in this diagram this is a base surface area and on it a single fin is provided a single rod like structure is there pin is, uh, you can easily imagine pin as you know just uh, it is having a very long length as, as compared to its uh, diameter or as compared to, uh, as compared to its uh, cross sectional area okay so length is very very large as compared to its cross sectional area or cross sectional dimensions Simil so uh, similarly uh, the surface area surface area will also be very very large as compared to the cross sectional area okay so that is the speciality of fin and major uh, heat transfer in this case will happen by convection so heat how heat will be transferred let us say this base uh, base surface is at uh, very high temperature and uh, uh, it it is attached with the fin so as to increase the heat transfer rate and uh, this base and along with its fin along with its rod uh, is exposed to surrounding fluid it is surrounded with some fluid at uh, low temperature let us say tf and heat transfer is occurring from the base area to the surrounding uh, surrounding fluid okay first it will be conducted uh, at the base into the fin and for and by convection from the fin body or fin surface to the surrounding fluid it will be by convection on uh, on all around its uh, on all around its surface or on all on all around its periphery okay so these diagrams we have uh, we have discussed the temperature variation can be shown along the length of the fin like this so this is y axis taken for temperature and this x axis on this x axis we uh, uh, we can put the length of the fin so this x equal to 0 means the base of the base location of the fin or the base uh, basic surface area and from this the fin is extending from uh, this point to on uh, in right hand direction up to its uh, up to its length okay up to its length so x equal to l will be this location so uh, obviously when the base surface is on hotter side higher side temperature of the base will be uh, higher so t fin base is at uh, uh, higher temperature and surrounding fluid is at lower temperature so uh, temperature is going to down and down okay temperature will go on decreasing as we move away from the base surface it will be it will be highest at the base and as we move away from the fin fin base along the length of the fin towards the tip the temperature is gradually decreasing is going to decrease gradually and eventually uh, it may approach the fluid temperature it may approach the surrounding fluid temperature okay so this is the case of uh, heat uh, heat transfer from the base to the surrounding fluid when temperature of the base is more than the temperature of surrounding fluid and this is the reverse case this is the reverse case when base surface is at lower temperature and surrounding fluid is at higher temperature in this is in this case uh, the heat transfer will take place from surrounding fluid to the base surrounding fluid to the base that is why the uh, these arrows are shown inwards or in reverse direction first it will transfer to the fin by convection at the surface and and through the fin to the base it will be by conduction okay so uh, uh, the surrounding fluid temperature is also shown in this uh, temperature variation diagram uh, it will be lying at somewhere at the, uh, at the at the lower end or at the lower level and it will be constant throughout the length of the fin because we are assuming surrounding fluid temperature to be uniform and constant throughout uh, for throughout the surface area of the fin okay so it will be the same so this is the case of uh, uh, surrounding fluid being lower than the uh, base uh, temperature and this is the case where surrounding fluid temperature is on higher side so this surrounding temperature is at uh, is at higher level and it is constant or uniform throughout throughout the length of the fin okay so uh, these graphs 
these graphs are typically known as temperature distribution graphs or temperature profile graphs so this curve indicates how temperature is varying along the fin length okay so this is the temperature profile so this curve is also known as temperature profile okay ideally it is always desirable to have a straight line temperature uh, profile that is temperature of the uh, fin length uh, temperature at uh, at any location along the fin length should be equal to the fin uh, fin base temperature okay if if uh, constant temperature is maintained across the fin length in that case we are going to get a uh, maximum amount of heat transfer okay maximum uh, amount of heat transfer okay because heat transfer rate is directly proportional to temperature difference here what is happening as uh, temperature is decreasing along the length of the fin uh, amount of heat transfer is also decreasing along the length of the fin okay as we move away from the base uh, the heat transfer rate is also decreasing okay so what is so what we can observe is uh, the rate of heat transfer is maximum in this in this portion that is when we are closer to the fin base the maximum amount of heat transfer is going to uh, is going to happen at this location at in this area and as we move away from it the amount uh, uh, the amount of heat transfer is going to decrease is going to decrease okay so this observation becomes very uh, useful or very important when we have to decide when we have to decide on the length of the fin okay when we have to uh, fix the length of the fin for required amount of heat transfer in that case uh, it becomes important that uh, uh, for how much uh, length how much length the fin should be provided okay because we cannot go uh, we cannot go up to like uh, infinitely long fin okay but this length has to be uh, limited has to be uh, fixed at certain value we cannot provide it to be uh, uh, we cannot extend the length of the fin like anything and up to infinity okay so there are there is certainly some limit to this fin fin length and that should that can be uh, that can be decided uh, with the help of temperature profile okay then we also covered the important parameters or important definitions such as fin effectiveness and fin efficiency okay fin effectiveness is the ratio of uh, <coughs> rate of heat transfer with fin and without fin okay so this should be always greater than 1 preferably it should be more than 2 then and then only uh, we can justify the provision of fins okay if uh, if the effectiveness is coming less than 1 or it just equal to 1 then there is no point in providing the fins okay then fin efficiency we also discussed uh, this factor so if fin efficiency will always be less than 1 actual heat uh, heat transfer rate is going to be uh, less as compared to the maximum possible or ideal possible so this is the ideal case where uh, just uh, just while ago i was uh, uh, i was explaining this thing that the temperature at any distance or at any uh, location on the fin should be equal to the base temperature this is the ideal condition so that temperature difference can be maintained constant throughout the length of the fin and uh, rate of heat transfer will be maximum in this condition but as we know in reality it is not possible Uh, due to certain effects and due to certain uh, constraints uh, temperature is going to decrease and decrease and thereby heat transfer rate will be less in this case so this is the maximum possible heat uh, heat transfer or this is the ideal condition and this is the actual condition so we will take the ratio of uh, these two the actual heat transfer to the maximum possible or ideal condition heat transfer and that will be the fin efficiency so fin efficiency will uh, definitely be less than 100% or it it will be less than 1 okay it can never be uh, it can never equal to 1 and uh, it and it will never be uh, more than 1 okay so more than 1 will be like uh, hypothetical or impossible case okay so fin efficiency will also will always be less than 1 and fin effectiveness will always be greater than 1 okay so desirable 
condition of uh, fin effectiveness is greater than 1 preferably greater than 2 okay so then uh, fin differential equation we uh, we applied the differential uh, mathematics and uh, we analyzed uh, the fin differential uh, element of a fin fin and uh, we set up the energy balance equation and we derived we had derived a general form of a differential equation that is applicable for all types of pin fin so we completed this part i hope you are able to see so this part we already covered and uh, we got up to this part okay, so this is going to be very important equation this is the general differential equation d2 theta by dx square minus hp upon k into theta equal to 0 uh, again this hp by k is replaced by a new term m square m is not the mass it is just non-dimensional parameter and for only simplicity for the sake of uh, simplicity of writing we converted this in this form d2 theta by dx square minus m square theta equal to 0 so this is the second order differential equation in the uh, with the variable of theta theta is the temperature difference theta is the temperature difference is equal to t minus tf t is the temperature of the fin at any distance at any length uh, from 0 to length length l and tf is the temperature of the surrounding fluid it is going to be constant okay so this is second order differential equation this will be applicable for all types of pin fin it is going to change its form uh, or the solution is going to take different forms and its constants are going to change according to the boundary conditions okay uh, for pin fin we have uh, different cases and as the cases change as the conditions change the boundary conditions will be different and as we apply different boundary conditions we are going to get different solutions okay so case wise we are going to get different solutions for this general differential equation okay so uh, this is as uh, from the mathematics uh, this type of uh, differential equation is given by this solution general solution theta equal to c1 e raised to mx plus c2 e raised to minus mx okay so c1 and c2 are the constants those will depend on the uh, on the boundary conditions and boundary conditions will depend on on uh, on the uh, respective cases on different different cases so in that regard let us see first case the first case is analysis of a pin fin with insulated end okay so so this is the case of pin fin with insulated end okay so diagram is same this is the base and this is the pin fin uh, let us say l is the total length of the pin fin and a is the cross sectional area if you uh, cross section is not shown in this diagram we are looking at the length only this uh, cross sectional area will be very very small as compared to length and as is the surface area okay uh, this is uh, this is surface area and this is cross sectional area cross sectional area will be perpendicular to the length will be perpendicular to the length okay and area is, uh, as is the surface area okay so different notations uh, we are using different notations only to avoid confusion okay because this surface area uh, is useful for uh, heat for a heat convection and this cross sectional area is useful for heat conduction because heat conduction is going to occur uh, occur along the length in this direction uh, along the x axis or along the uh, horizontal direction of x from left to right and heat convection is going to occur in this in perpendicular direction that is uh, around the periphery along the uh, surface area okay so we can in general we can plot the temperature profile like this temperature this is y axis vertical axis temperature distance uh, horizontal axis is distance x so x equal to 0 is starting point at the base and x equal to l is the length of the fin okay so these are the limits or these are the boundaries and temperature is going to decrease 
in this curve manner okay so t0 being at the higher temperature and it is going to decrease and decrease uh, up to till the length l at the tip of the fin and let us say tf is the surrounding fluid temperature which is going to be constant and uh, which will be on lower side okay so at uh, so tf is constant it is the same at the base as well as it is same at the x equal to l and at any distance uh, in between the length at for any distance between for the uh, fin between 0 to l it is going to be the same okay so let us say this is the case of insulated end as if we are the so in this case we are assuming there is some insulation at the tip there is some insulation provided on the, at the tip uh, in reality or uh, <coughs> in actual situation we uh, there is nothing like an insulation material attached to this end but uh, we are assuming it is to be insulated we are assuming that is to be insulated it means that we are assuming there is no heat transfer at the tip from this uh, at the tip uh, in x direction in x direction okay as if there is a heat transfer rate is very uh, negligible or it is close to zero okay because uh, as i had uh, as we had discussed this that uh, as we move away from the fin base the rate of heat transfer rate is uh, also decreasing because temperature difference temperature di uh, difference is decreasing so more amount of heat transfer is occurring by convection in this part as we move away from the fin base along the length of the fin towards the tip the amount of heat transfer rate is going to decrease and decrease and decrease okay so major part of heat transfer is going to take place by convection uh, which is closer to the base okay let us say uh, we are assuming it to be insulated fin so thereby uh, uh, heat transfer in this direction at the length uh, at the tip is zero okay we are assuming this because let us say as compared to the heat transfer which is occurring in by convection around the periphery this heat transfer rate at the tip is going to be very small or very negligible uh, let us say uh, i will give you some numbers so that you can compare let us say the heat transfer rate by convection around the periphery is 1000 watts is 1000 watts so 1000 is one number and let us say at the tip uh, along the x direction the heat conduction uh, heat transfer by conduction is by is let us say only 5 watts okay 5 to 10 watts so as compared to 1000 10 watts is 10 watt is very very small or very negligible it is only 1% of the heat which is transferred by, by convection in transfer direction okay so as compared to the major part of uh, heat transfer in at the surface area this heat transfer at the tip is very very small that is why we are assuming that heat transfer rate is zero so thereby when we say heat transfer rate is zero it essentially means uh, temperature gradient in that direction is zero in the x direction at the tip is zero so d, d theta by dx is equal to zero so the mathematical condition is at x equal to l d, d, d theta by dx equal to zero okay so uh, we will use now these boundary conditions uh, to solve the general differential equation this is already said now we have two boundary conditions at x equal to zero temperature is t zero okay at x equal to zero at the base of the fin temperature of the fin is equal to the base temperature that is t zero so the difference will be t zero minus tf so theta uh, theta will will be represented by theta zero zero means a zero suffix means it is temperature difference at the base temperature difference at the base is equal to t0 minus tf let us call it equation 3 then boundary condition 2 that is at x equal to l at this tip okay one boundary condition is of temperature difference at this uh, at this location and the other boundary condition at this location we have already already discussed that d theta by dx is equal to 0 temperature gradient is 0 okay so d theta by dx at x equal to l equal to 0 this is equation 4 now using boundary condition 1 in equation 3 this is the general solution of uh, 
of uh, temperature distribution. So we will put this boundary condition one in uh, in equation two. So theta comes out as theta zero is equal to c one e raised to now in place of x we will put x equal to zero c one e raised to zero into m plus c two into e raised to minus m into zero. Okay. So anything raised to zero is one. So this is maths that anything raised to zero is one. So theta zero equal to c one plus c two. Equation number five. Now we can differentiate the equation two so that we get d, d theta by dx term. So let us differentiate this with respect to x. So d, d theta by dx equal to m c one into e raised to m x minus m c two e raised to minus m x. E m is constant. C one is also constant. So e raised to m x, you know that uh, differentiation is done like e raised to m x is uh, index whatever is the index come here uh, into e raised to same function repeats. Okay. So this is equation number six. Then at x equal to l, in this equation we will put x equal to l. So d theta by d x at x equal to l is equal to m c one as it is e raised to uh, x is replaced by l. So e raised to Plus m l minus m c two e raised to minus m l. Okay. Then on left hand side uh, we can write zero because we know this boundary condition. So left hand side is zero is equal to this uh, form. Okay. From this we can cancel out m m being common factor and on right side it is on left side it is zero. So m m get cancelled out. So let us rearrange the terms. So we obtain c1 into e raised to ml equal to c2 into e raised to minus ml. Okay. So from this we can write a relation between c1 and c2. So c1, uh, this taken on left, uh, right hand side on uh, denominator. So we can write c1 equal to c2 into e raised to minus uh, twice ml. In fact, it will come with e raised to minus ml sign. So minus ml minus ml uh, will make it to plus minus 2 ml. Okay. Now C1 and C2 relationship is obtained. We can put this equation seven in equation five. Equation five was earlier step. Uh, so C1 plus C2 equal to theta zero. In this, uh, C1 will be replaced by this uh, form. So C2 into e raised to minus two ml plus C2 in is equal to theta zero. So C2 being common taken out. So C2 into 1 plus e raised to minus twice ml equal to theta zero. Then C2 is equal to theta zero divided by 1 plus e raised to minus twice ml. Uh, now for this equation uh, on right hand side, let us divide uh, n and d. N it is in it is written in short form. N means numerator and d means denominator. Let us divide numerator and denominator by factor of e raised to minus ml. So that uh, mathematically it will not change its value. So C2 is equal to uh, theta zero divided by e raised to minus two uh, minus ml uh, divided by uh, this factor is expanded. So e raised to minus two ml divided by e raised to minus ml plus one divided by e raised to minus ml. Okay. So further simplification will get us. Uh, C2 is equal to theta zero e raised to plus ml upon e raised to Plus ml plus e raised to minus ml. Okay, equation number eight. Uh, now we can put C two in equation seven. So equation seven was uh, relation for C one. So C one equal to uh, C one equal to C two into e raised to minus uh, twice ml. Now C two is this. It is directly placing here. So theta zero into e raised to ml upon e raised to ml plus e raised to minus ml into e raised to minus twice ml. Again, uh, this can be adjusted. So this plus ml, this minus twice ml. So it becomes e raised to minus ml. So other factor remains constant. So c1 equal to this equation number nine. So both c1 and c2 are obtained. Equation eight, c2. Equation nine is c1. We can put uh, c1 and c2 back into the general uh, formula of uh, theta. That is temperature difference. Theta is equal to this is c1. So theta zero into e raised to minus ml upon E raised to ml plus e raised to minus ml e into e raised to mx plus theta zero into e raised to ml upon e raised to ml plus e raised to minus ml into e raised to minus mx. Okay. Then uh, 
we can adjust for uh, indexes so this theta 0 is common it is taken out of uh, both sides uh, both terms so theta 0 comes out as a common factor and then this is taken to denominator on left side so theta by theta 0 equal to uh, now what we are left with is e raised to minus ml into e raised to mx okay so base is common only indexes we have to adjust so here on index side uh, minus m can be taken out so minus m as common factor and in bracket we can write l minus x l minus x same will happen for this e raised to plus m is taken out common so plus m into bracket l minus x okay so it is adjusted in such a way that we get the indexes in the form of l minus x l minus x uh, into m okay same will happen on the denominator uh, denominator being the same so e raised to ml plus e raised to minus ml okay so this is equation number 10 uh, then it becomes quite uh, uh, quite difficult to carry forward like this uh, we have to write down every time the terms in the in this form so it becomes very difficult because everything is raised to power and uh, there are many factors so in place of this we can replace we can further simplify with uh, with the help of trigonometric and hyperbolic functions now, now from trigonometry and hyperbolic functions we know that cos of hyperbolic of any variable n is given by this form that is cos hyperbolic of n is equal to e raised to n plus e raised to minus n by 2 okay now we certainly have this uh, these expressions in this form so we can adjust uh, this in this form and so that we can use uh, hyperbolic functions for uh, these equations okay so on numerator uh, we will adjust like this e raised to minus m into l minus x plus e raised to m uh, into l minus uh, x divided by 2 so this term is divided by 2 and on denominator also it is divided by 2 so mathematically it remains unchanged so on numerator we we got this form on denominator we get e raised to ml plus e raised to minus ml by 2 so this resembles this this is very similar to this cos hyperbolic function now uh, the variable n is equal to m into l minus x m into l minus x this is the variable on numerator and on denominator ml is the variable so we can adjust like this theta by theta 0 is equal to cos of hyperbolic into m uh, into big bracket of m into l minus x divided by cos hyperbolic ml okay cos hyperbolic ml so using the hyperbolic uh, function of uh, and the trigonometric function of uh, cos cosine uh, we uh, uh, we converted this uh, uh, exponential form of equation in this hyperbolic form of equation okay so this now this becomes very uh, useful form and very easy to write very simple to uh, also very simple to remember so theta by theta 0 is equal to cos hyperbolic of m into bracket l minus x upon cos hyperbolic ml so out of this m and l are constants l is the length m is the under root hp upon k that factor okay so this gives uh, from this equation we can easily get to know or we can easily calculate or predict the temperature uh, at any distance x between 0 to l okay if you put here x equal to 0 this will turn to cos hyperbolic ml divided by cos hyperbolic ml so ratio becomes 1 so uh, then we can write theta is equal to theta 0 that is uh, x equal to 0 means uh, temperature difference at the base so this becomes theta equal to theta 0 and we get temperature of the fin as equal to uh, base temperature t0 okay in this way you can put x equal to l by 2 so at the midpoint of the fin you can find the value okay you can find the value because in that case it will be cos hyperbolic m l by 2 and divided by cos hyperbolic ml we have to simply put in values of m and l and we get the temperature at that location okay so you put any distance x here you are going to get the temperature difference and thereby temperature of the fin at that distance x okay so this gives the temperature distribution along the any distance x okay now from this now we can find out the rate of heat transfer from the fin so heat flow from the fin by conduction can be given by q equal to minus k d theta by dx this is by fourier's uh, law okay we are simply applying fourier's law at the base at the base of the fin so at the base of the fin uh, 
q equal to minus k d theta by dx at x equal to 0. So, we have to find the value of d theta by dx at x equal to 0 means at the at the base of the fin at the start of the fin. Okay. So, uh, from equation 6 we certainly know the expression for d, th d theta by dx and in that we have to only put x equal to 0. So, d theta by dx is equal to m c 1 e raise to m into x in place of x we are putting 0 minus m into c 2 into e raise to minus m x equal to 0. In place of x we are uh, putting 0 so that we get this value. So, we get m into c 1 minus uh, m into c 1 minus c 2. Okay, c 1 c 2 we have already evaluated we can put their values directly. So, m into theta 0 uh, okay c1 and c2 we can put in and we can uh, further readjust and uh, re-simplify. So, we get m into theta 0 into big square bracket e raise to minus ml minus e raise to ml upon e raise to ml plus e raise to minus ml. Again, uh, this, re, uh, this relation or this term can be converted into trigonometric and hyperbolic function. Uh, for this matter, we know that sin hyperbolic of any variable x is given by e raise to x minus e raise to minus x by 2 and cos hyperbolic is already we have done this cos hyperbolic of x equal to e raise to x plus e raise to minus x by 2. Now, we have these terms in the same form. Okay. So, on the for this what we will do is uh, numerator will be numerator will be divided by 2 same way denominator will be divided by 2. So, this ratio will turn in this form. And this is nothing but sin hyperbolic of ml and denominator is nothing but cos hyperbolic of ml. Okay. So, only you have to compare this form to this form. Okay. In this uh, general uh, formula, there is the x, it is given for x. Here, uh, the variable will be ml, variable is ml. Okay. Otherwise, the format is same. So, we get minus m into theta 0 into sin of hyperbolic ml upon cos of hyperbolic ml. Again, we know that sin by cos hyperbolic is tan hyperbolic. Okay, sin theta by cos theta is so is uh, is actually tan theta. Okay, so d, d theta by dx at x equal to zero is equal to minus m into uh, zero theta zero into tan hyperbolic of ml, tan hyperbolic of ml. Okay, so in this way uh, we can simplify uh, the very difficult or very uh, very long expressions into very short form of equations okay so that it can be well remembered it can be well understood and well remembered and it also becomes very handy to use in calculations okay so d theta by dx at x equal to 0 is equal to minus m into theta 0 into tan hyperbolic of ml equation number 13. Now, we can put this in equation of q that is rate of heat transfer equal to minus k in bracket minus m into theta 0 into tan hyperbolic of ml. This minus minus sign comes out as positive. So, po positive k into m into theta 0 into tan hyperbolic of ml. Okay. Now, we know m is uh, in the earlier part of derivation, we had replaced, we had used this term in uh, for uh, replacement of under root of hp upon k. m is nothing but under root hp upon k. So, m is replaced by this under root hp upon k. Now, this k can be taken inside of uh, under root. So, it, it comes as k square into h square. So, these can be cancelled out k square h square and here it is k. So, one of the k get cancelled. So, what we are left with is rate of heat transfer is equal to under root hp k into theta 0 into tan hyperbolic ml. Okay. So, square root is only this term. Only four, ter four terms are there under the root and the remaining terms are out of the root theta 0 into tan hyperbolic ml okay so this gives the rate of heat flow from the fin with insulated end okay so this case for this case the rate of heat transfer will be given by uh, this equation okay h is the heat transfer coefficient that is constant p is the perimeter perimeter of the fin then k uh, k thermal conductivity of the fin and a this is the cross sectional area of the fin this is cross sectional area of the fin. If fin is in the form of uh, cylindrical shape, so cylinder cylindrical shape has a diameter. So, perimeter of the uh, cylinder will be pi into diameter pi d or 2 pi r. 
and cross sectional area will be pi by 4 d square okay diameter of the pin given so pi by 4 d square so those values we can easily insert here and we can easily find out the rate of heat transfer okay next term is fin efficiency for a given case fin efficiency by definition is uh, ratio of uh, heat transfer actual heat transfer to the maximum possible heat transfer okay uh, so the actual heat transfer is this just we had derived is under root of hp into ka into theta 0 into tan hyperbolic ml theta 0 is going to be constant temperature difference theta 0 uh, will be given by t0 minus tf okay this we had already substituted in earlier part of derivation okay so q then uh, maximum heat transfer is possible when uh, the entire fin uh, entire fin length is uh, maintained at the same temperature and same uh, temperature difference as of the base is maintained constant so maximum heat transfer is h into a s a s is the surface area into theta 0 into theta 0 okay now a s can be replaced by p into l p is the perimeter and l is the length of the fin the surface area is given by perimeter into length okay so we can put in the q and q max q is under root hp upon k into theta 0 into tan hyperbolic of ml divided by q max is h into surface area as into theta 0 okay now this area a this is cross sectional area this is different and a with suffix s is surface area both are different okay so from this theta 0 theta 0 get cancelled out as is uh, put in like p into l as is replaced by product of p into l now this p h p l can be taken into root side under root so in under root it will be h square p square and l square so when uh, we take it in under root uh, h, uh, h and h will get cancelled out uh, one of the h will get will get cancelled out as shown here so h p this is h square and p square so h uh, one of the h cancels out one of the p cancels out and uh, l we are keeping it outside so tan hyperbolic ml upon l this ratio maintained separate and under root then we have under root k upon hp k as it is divided by h into p into bracket tan hyperbolic of ml upon l now this ratio is like inverse inverse of m m is equal to under root hp upon k and this is inverse uh, it is under root k upon hp so if it is taken to denominator we can write in reverse form so under root hp upon k so this is nothing but m so we can efficiency uh, then simplified in this form tan hyperbolic ml upon ml okay so with these all mathematical substitutions and uh, uh, simplifications we get to fin efficiency in very simple and easy form so that we can easily remember this as well as we can use this in calculation so efficiency for a case of pin fin with insulated end is tan hyperbolic ml upon ml okay so this is this is how we obtained uh, uh, efficiency of uh, insulated fin as well as heat transfer rate for from a pin uh, insulated tip fin okay then we can go for relationship between fin effectiveness and fin efficiency fin effectiveness and fin efficiency both are different terms as I already said that fin effectiveness uh, should always be higher than one uh, should be always greater than one and it will be and uh, fin efficiency will always be less than one will always be less than one so fin effectiveness is heat transfer rate with fins divided by heat transfer rate without fins that is bare area or base area then uh, heat transfer rate with fins is equal to under root hp into k into theta 0 tan hyperbolic of ml then heat transfer rate from the base area without any fins when there are no any fins uh, now now see this is the fin uh, provided on the base area and heat transfer rate this heat transfer rate is uh, when fin is provided okay from the fin surface and uh, fin is being provided on the base area which is going to equal to the cross sectional area and if we remove the this fin uh, and originally uh, this will have the rate of heat transfer qb okay the rate of heat transfer qb that is bare surface area or base surface area 
let us say ab a to the suffix b is the bare surface area then it will be given by h into area of base into theta 0 into theta 0 so effectiveness is equal to uh, this is the heat transfer rate in numerator with fins and this is without fin okay so we will put in all the parameters and we can cancel out the common parameters theta 0 theta 0 cancels out uh, again we will write it in suitable form so tan hyperbolic ml on uh, numerator under root hp upon k this is taken to denominator so it and uh, there is also h in the denominator so this is taken inside of the root so under root we can write h square upon h p k so one of the h cancels out a b we are keeping outside okay then further effectiveness is written in this form tan hyperbolic ml of under root h upon h p k into a b we'll keep as it is okay further we cannot simplify but only for time being we will keep in this form only okay so equation number 16 in the same way, fin efficiency can be uh, written in this form, Q divided by Q max, actual uh, heat transfer rate divided by maximum possible heat transfer rate. For the given case, we have obtained this in this form, that is tan hyperbolic ML upon ML. Again, this M can be put back like under root HP upon K into L. Let us call equation 6, this is 17, this is 16, okay. From these two equations, one thing we can observe, there is in numerator, there is tan hyperbolic ml on right hand side. And here also we have tan hyperbolic ml on right hand side. Okay, so we can equate them on the basis of this. So for that matter, we have to take the product of effectiveness into this denominator on left side. That will be equated to efficiency into this term, efficiency into product of this term. Because on right hand side, thereby we can have the same tan hyperbolic ml, tan hyperbolic ml. So left hand sides can be equated to each other. So from the same is done here from 16 and 17. Left hand sides are equated. Effectiveness into under root of h upon p into k into uh, base area ab is equal to efficiency into under root of h p upon k into length l. Okay. Uh, from both sides, h under root h is common, so it is cancelled under root k is common so that is also cancelled so we are left with eff effectiveness into base area a b upon under root p uh, equal to right hand side efficiency into under root p into l so this will this p will transfer uh, to right hand side so that becomes p under root p under root p okay the square of under root will be p only so efficiency into p l uh, and on right side uh, left side we have effectiveness into base area then P into L is nothing but surface area, AS, AS. Again, we will uh, back substitute it, okay. So effectiveness, this AB can be taken to right hand side. Uh, then we get the ratio of effectiveness to efficiency as ratio of surface area of the fin to the base area, to the base area, okay. So this, this way uh, we can... Uh, we can use the relationship between effectiveness and efficiency, which is always the ratio of surface area of the fin to the base area, surface area of the fin to the base area. Okay. This relation will be going to be useful when we solve certain problems where we, there we can, for simplicity, we can directly use such relation and we, we can uh, then proceed for the solution. Okay. Okay. The next case is infinitely long fin. So, so far we covered the so analysis for a, for only one case that is uh, that was initially uh, initially explained to you or initially announced to you that a pin fin with insulated tip pin fin with insulated tip uh, let me get back to that page okay so this case number one is now uh, over uh, analysis of a pin fin with insulated end okay for this we applied these boundary conditions that is d, d theta by dx is equal to 0 okay uh, so the time is already 12 1235 12 close to 1235 so we will stop our discussion on this part and we will con we will take on to the remaining cases of pin fin in the next class okay probably on the monday uh, so at this point let me
record your attendance and then you can depart just okay it is recorded well uh, i will stop this recording okay you can leave now thank you thank you for attention